Hello and welcome back. At the end of the previous video, we ended integrating or we ended with the integration of Cypress and now we have Cypress in our project under the folder Cypress. We didn't really do much in the direction of writing the end-to-end -end tests for our application. We just left the default test that came with Cypress and the goal of this video is to take us from this point to actually having an end-to-end -end test that reflects the functionality of our current application plus a script that we're going to use to run this local or this end-to-end -end tests in our local environment. The script is not strictly necessary. You could run just with the, the package JSON script, so, so the npm run commands. However, I do think that it makes sense we make our lives a little bit easier by having a script that takes care of starting a local server, running the tests, and then properly shutting down the local server once the tests are done. All right, with that being said, let's start writing our first test. We want some action today. So that's what we're gonna call it productivity app.spec.ts. Okay, so we're gonna follow really, um, closely the structure of this of this demo project we're going to start with a describe here on the top with a describe and that's going to give us a way of describing this test we're going to say tests the home screen of productive me all right so here within this and this again it's very similar to what we've been writing so far in terms of tests we're going to say it should not display any tasks when opening for the first time all right so once again the tests we're writing here they are considering the functionality we have in the moment or at the moment they don't really take this into the future because in the future we would actually like to show the tasks from the user from the past but for now we want to make sure that we're not displaying anything once we open this for the first time and if you have a look here, we actually have a cy.visit in a before each loop. So that means um, we set this up to ensure that Cypress visits the respective URL before it actually runs the tests. Okay, so we're going to do the same here. We're going to have a before each and we're going to receive a function. We'll simply say cy.visit and for now we're going to hard code the URL here that's going to be http forward slash forward slash localhost colon 3001. Okay, this is still hard coded. We're going to change that in a bit. Great. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the, the, the list of tasks in our screen, right? So we're going to visit this before we actually initialize running the tests. And then we need to get the list and we're going to we need to make sure that it has a length of zero. So how do we do that in Cypress? As you can see here, there are a couple of hints, right? It says cy.get, and then we can perform a should comparison have length with a value of two. In our case, that's gonna be a value of zero. So we will say cy.get, and then here we'll simply say should, and then have something, okay? The get expects a selector. And in our case, we're going to use something slightly different than what they have here. Here they select based on the class. I'm not really a fan of this because we may change classes. We may add and remove classes dynamically. And even, even worse, we, we just may change the names of the classes because that, that is quite a generic name, for example. We don't know how many classes we'll have in the future. So we don't really want to use classes to select elements. They are more volatile. What we want to do is we want to set a, a specific property that we define in our React components and then we want to select based on that property. We haven't set the property yet, but we're gonna already code it in our tests. So this is going to be a property, an attribute called data test ID. And this is um, something that is arbitrary you can change, you can call it data CUI, you can call it data test, you can call it data test ID. I prefer to call it data test ID and I'm gonna call this the tasks list, okay? And within here, I wanna select all the list elements within of my list, within, within my tasks list. 
and I want to ensure that it should have dot length and you see that it actually gives us a lot of nice matchers here so it should have length of zero all right so let's try to run this test because remember we are doing TDD which means it's better if the test is failing so that we can go fix that I'm going to skip these tests because I'm not very interested in rerunning them again. I know that they work. They come with a package. So I'm just interested in running the productivity app test. Let's have a look at our package.json. And here it is. Here is the script that we need to run. Okay. So npm run. And let's see what this is going to give us on the screen. All right, as you can see, it, it cannot even access this 3001. And that's because our local host or our local server is not really running. Remember, I mentioned that the script would take care of, of this for us. For the moment, we don't have a script. So let's run the start command. And in another terminal, we are gonna run the, so, okay, it's, it's compiled. So we're gonna run the other one here, npm run test e2e okay so once i have this now now it should be able to at least access the localhost forward slash 3001 all right so it is able to access the 3001 and it's actually passing and that's because basically it's not finding our element so whatever we actually go under the element and and then it actually has a length of zero and probably you're also wondering i, I was uh, I'm actually wondering why is this passing because we don't really have a data test ID tasks list on the screen. Um, so, so this is an interesting behavior. One way that we can actually debug this is to come to Cypress and run npx Cypress open. That is going to be, th th that will open the GUI for us and we can run the specific test here so that it doesn't close after it completes. Let's have a look. All right, and you see here that we actually have a expect undefined to have a length of zero. Now, this sounds weird. My hunch is that this is not really correct. It shouldn't really pass, but this may also be because of like false values in JavaScript where zero, undefined, null, and empty string, and all these things, they are actually equivalent. All right, so here let's, let's do a slightly different version of this test. We're gonna just make sure that this component is defined beforehand. So we're gonna say cy.get and we're gonna pass here the, the, the same selector, right? So this is the same selector. Um, and we want to make sure that this exists, right? So it should exist. Now, once I save this, you will see that it's rerunning my test, but it's actually, it, it's not able to find it so uh, it's trying it's timing out after four seconds and then it's saying expected to find element with this with this with this attribute but never found it that's great so this is what we actually wanted and now we can go back to our to our code and we can fix it so the way that we fix it is just to add this as an attribute to the relevant element it's in the task list and we want to make sure that we set the data test ID to tasks dash list in our list component. Now, if we come back to the test, let's have a look if we can rerun it. Perfect. So everything is passing now. And as you can see here, now it's finding and then it's taking this and still here it's giving us an undefined to have a length of zero, but we're gonna take care of this in a little bit. All right, so the next test we wanna write here is we'll say it adds a new item to the list right. this is again just a function and here we'll say cy.get and again we want to use a more stable selector than just a class name we're going to call this a test id of a create task input right so this will be our input field that we see on the top that we can use to create a task and this we're going to type something here and we will type first task. Okay, so once we type the first task, we then need to actually get the button. Remember from the screen, data, test ID, and this will be create task, submit button. 
and we want to click on this button. Once we click on this button, we should then be able to see an element on our screen containing the first task text, right? So this should exist. All right, I'm gonna save this and let's have a look again at the test running here. And as you can see, this is already failing because we don't really have any element with this data test ID attribute. So let's go and let's add this to our component. And remember, we are creating a task on this create task component. So here is our text field. We're gonna mark this as a create task input data test ID. And this is our submit button. All right, once I save this and come back here, Let's rerun this and you will see that it's able, it, it can add a new task to our, um, to our list. And the last thing I wanna do here, just wanna make sure that this is actually working as expected. And it's not because that, that message with the undefined and the zero, it's still bothering me. Uh, so I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste it here because now I know that I should have a length of one because I have just created the first task. I'm gonna save this and let's have a look if that is the case. Perfect, everything is passing. I can run this again. And here you can see that it finds the element. All right, so this like undefined to have a length of zero. Uh, it, it's a bit of a cryptic message, uh, but nonetheless, this is exactly what we would expect. Okay, so, so we, we use exactly the same selector and now we're able to check for the correct length. All right, and the last test I wanna write with you here is that it should just allow, so it allows checking a task as completed. All right, so here, same thing, I'm just gonna get again the test input, or sorry, the data test ID, I'm gonna create a new task. And then what is interesting here is I'm gonna use a cy.get, or actually, sorry, the contains here for the first, first task text. And then within its parent, okay, within its parent, because here, um, I'm getting the element and I want to make sure that I'm getting the, the, the overall list item element. If we have a look here at our task list, you see that we have, this is our form control label and we are getting the, the, we are getting the, the label here. So we want to get the parent form control label. And then here I'll just get the, the, the parent and I am going to find within the parent, I'm going to find an input. And this input is going to be of a type checkbox. And once I find this, I'm just gonna click on it, all right? And then this actually should be checked, right? So quite, quite straightforward. Let's have a look here. I'm gonna save this. And this is gonna rerun our tests. And as you can see, there you go. It finds it, it clicks on it, it checks everything. And that's pretty much everything that we can do with our app so far. Now we have this is actually implemented. That's pretty much everything I wanted to do for the tests with Cypress. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna delete the getting started folder. And actually here, maybe we could even create a directory and say productivity app. And then within here, we can say this is going to be the home screen, right? So instead of just having it here, I'm gonna say refactor, I'll say home uh, dot spec dot ts, right? So that, that we could also, for example, test different pages of our app in the future. I'm just gonna keep with the home here. Once I save this, that's probably gonna change a few things. Yes, so now here I can, I can execute this one and everything should still be running fine. So let's close everything. I'm gonna stop this. And what I actually want to do now, I'm gonna close this. And the last thing I want to do with you now is to, first thing, I, I wanna change this cypress.json here. I don't know why it created it again. That's probably because it's not, um, it didn't really get, whenever I ran this npx cypress run, it, uh, sorry, open, it probably didn't get the config file from our um, from our folder here and it recreated it. So let me delete this one and let's try it again. We're gonna say 
test colon e2e dash open and we'll simply say here cypress open dash dash config file and we're going to copy this from here okay let's have a look if this actually solves our problem test e2e dash open okay great it's it's open here and once i close it it's not creating anything new for me that's good so that's what we would expect one quick change here i just want to add the video to false because i don't really want to record videos not because they take space but just because they take time so if the tests are slightly more extensive it takes time to convert and record the videos just want to set this to false because i'm not interested on videos at the moment last thing for today's video is we want to really um, make things easier, ma make our lives easier. We don't want to have to initialize our, our local server um, in another, in a, different, in a different process. If we want, we can do so, but we also want to have a quick shortcut just in case we want to run the um, scripts or we want to run the E3 tests without having to, to set up everything manually. So let's create a new folder here that's going to be called scripts. And I'm just going to write a little very, very, very like uh, basic um, a bash script, right? So let's say we're going to call this uh, run loco e2e.sh. All right. And the first thing I want to do is I want to set my exit code. Actually, let's, let's, let's uh, come back to this later on. So first thing is I want to set my port and this is just a random port. Like, I mean, you can, if you've seen, if you've worked with a couple of front end technologies, you see that there are some different ports like 4200 uh, 4, is normally angular, uh, 3333 3, 3 can be a couple of apps there depending on the provider, uh, React it's either 3000 or 9000 or something, 8000 I think is Gatsby, so it's like it, the number of ports it really or the number of the ports changes um, so so let's just pick one that we know it's kind of available so let's create um, first thing we actually need to to make sure that there is nothing running on this port okay if there is something running on this port then we cannot really in initiate <laughs> initialize our our local server right so the first thing is we want to kill stuff <laughs> yeah like we just want to make sure that we're getting whatever process is running here and then we're going to pass this as a bunch of arguments to x args um, and we're going to kill with a sick kill that means just kill immediately whatever is on these ports um, and then we can and make sure that that this is um, free for our servers right so if i just write here the dollar sign port then this will um, make sure that i'm using consistently consistently the port okay perfect so this clears up our ports and we can actually do a little echo here just to to make sure that the script is running as expected so run local e2e and we'll say killing processes on port 3334 perfect now we can again do a little echo and that's again more for kind of debugging purposes um, just for us to know where we are in this script we'll say that we are starting uh, the dev server and then here we'll say npm run actually just npm start and then dash 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 port is equal to dollar sign port all right so why do i have something like this <laughs> it's it's because if i just run with the dash dash port this dash dash port will be passed to the npm start command that's not what i want what i want is i want to pass the dash dash port to the underlying command that is being executed by npm start so the underlying command is our webpack serve and we have a config here we have an environment and then we can also add here a port all right we could do something like this port 3334 for example but we don't want to hard code this in the package.json file we just want to pass this flag from the outside so we need to pass with a dash dash an additional dash dash here to ensure that whatever comes after this 
is passed as arguments to the underlying script being executed by npm start. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to then echo run local, run local e2e, and this is um, running the e2e tests, right? So now here, the only thing we want to run, and what's the name of the script again, is test e2e, right? So test e2e here, npm run test e2e, perfect. So if I try to run this, this will actually not work, okay? Um, let's have a look. And the first thing I need to do is I need to actually add an execute permission to this script. So that's going to be two scripts forward slash run local E2E. And then I can run it scripts run dash local E2E. Let's have a look at what's going to happen here. So I have initialized my server and the server is ready. But the problem here is that this process that was triggered by this line, line seven here, it's actually a, it's continuously running. So if this keeps the terminal busy, we will never actually get to npm run test e2e. So we need to find a way to actually execute this, at least trigger the execution, free up the shell and continue the execution for the next script. And how do we do that? It's actually quite straightforward. And as you can see here, once I killed it, now it continues to the next script, but that's not gonna work because, because our local server is not really accessible. By the way, you probably already noticed that in the previews, um, in the window that opened here, we are still with the port 3001. That's because this is hard coded here. We'll take care of this in a bit. But for now, we just want to make sure that this is, so it's, like its execution is started, but it doesn't really stop us from going forward. The way that we do that is super simple. We just add an ampersand, uh, ampersand, I think it's, it's how we call this. We add an ampersand to the end of this statement. So now if I save this, let's have a look. Now you see that it starts here. And then you see that, oops, it already starts executing the test from Cypress, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So we just trigger the execution. The execution is somewhere here, exactly perfect. And you see that it started the Cypress actually before the bundle was finished. For that, we're just gonna add a little sleep here, five seconds, okay? Uh, just to make sure that we're waiting a bit. So, so just few, uh, make a little pause before we go to the, to the E2E command. Great, so the problem with the blocking um, command here is solved, but we still have a couple of issues. Remember the URL here on, on our test is hard coded. Um, and actually we are still running some stuff in the, in, in the port 3334. Let's run this script again. Um, and let's wait until it fails and it exist, uh, exits. All right, now if I actually run the command to get the, the, the processes running on 3334 here, I actually get two processes and this keeps running, right? So, the, so this port is busy, even though I'm not really running uh, the, the actual script. So the, the local server is still running here and I don't want that. So the first thing I, I will do is I'll just kill the ports once I'm done executing it. So now we have a bit of duplicated code. Let's just define a function. We're gonna say free port 3334 and I'll just copy paste this inside. All right, that's better. And now I can call the function here, free port 3334 here. And then I'm gonna call the same one, free port 3334 here. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna execute again the script and now it should actually just not return anything once or after it exits from the script. Yeah, see that it's, it's, it's telling us here, it's killing the processes on the port. Once I try to execute this, you see that nothing is returned and I'm actually getting um, like a little red arrow here on the, on the left, which means, okay, we couldn't really find anything for you. So that's exactly what we want. Now let's let's have a look at how we can 
pass a dynamic URL here or pass the, the actual URL that we need to load uh, via an environment variable to our E2E tests. So the principle is pretty much the same as we had actually with, with passing the port to the start command. We're going to pass a dash dash. And then for Cypress, we can pass a bunch of environment variables. And here I'm just going to call it web app URI. And this is going to be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon dollar port. Okay, so I'm just using the same port here. And now, of course, I need to use this, your, uh, this, this environment variable somewhere. And this is in here. Now I'm going to use cypress.env and I will just pass the name of the variable web app URI. I'm going to save this and let's run the scripts again. And as you can see here, it's already passing the environment variable to our Cypress test. And now everything should work. Perfect. Everything is working fine. Everything is passing. And that's, that's great. Now there is one more little problem that it's like a super little problem. Uh, you wouldn't really need to worry about it, but I, I really want to cover, I really want to do things as they should be done. So when we run our test command, and again, this is important, like you will see why this is important in a bit, but it's mainly important when we are in a CI environment that we want to use the exit codes of our commands in order to stop the pipeline in case something fails. Let's make a little change here to our, to our tests. And I'm going to say that I'm expecting a length of two here. Okay. So line 15, remember we just have one task. But I'm going to say I'm expecting two tasks. I'm going to save this and I'm going to run this script again. And something very interesting will happen. So you see that now it's, it's failing here. It's not really finding it. And the script, so the tests fail. However, if I were to actually echo the exit code of the last script executed or the last command executed in the bash, you will see that it has an exit code of zero. It does not have an exit code different than zero. Even though our tests failed, we are still having an exit code of zero, which means the script was successfully executed because of this free port 3334 command. This command is actually successfully completing, which means that the whole script is, ex uh, is exiting successfully. If we were in a CI environment, this is bad because our tests are failing, but our pipeline would continue and we would deploy this, this breaking changes to our int environments, to our prod environments. We don't really want that, right? So what we actually want to do here, we want to do a little bit of a magic. <laughs> it's not really magic. It's just um, a little bit of a, an app uh, update, right? So we want to store our exit code we're going to store we're going to start with an exit code of zero here but we want to update this exit code in case something happens in our test so here i'm going to use an or command and all i'm going to do is i'm just going to store the latest command to our or the latest exit code to our exit code variable and then here i'm going to exit with the exit code okay so what does this do? Um, basically, it just starts with an exit code of zero. Now this OR operator here, it does something like this. It's going to execute the first, the, the, the first command. And only if this first part fails, it's going to execute the second part. So basically here is, it, it's, I'm telling the command, all right, if the tests fail, they will exit with a non-zero code. So please, update the exit code with this non-zero code if that happens. Okay, so if this part fails, please run this part and store the exit code in a variable. And then here, just exit with the exit code. If this is successful, all right, if this is successful, this is not going to execute and we'll still have an exit code of zero here from the top. So I'm going to save this and let's execute this once again. 
All right, amazing. So now you can see here, we already have a red line, which means that our exit code was not zero. All right, if I were to echo the last exit code, you see that it's one and that's exactly what we want. So let's go back to our, where is it? What, what did I want to go back to? Our test that was failing. <laughs> uh, and I want to change this to actually just one. Okay, so once again, let's run it. And now it should be pretty quick, but let's just keep in mind what we, we are after. So we are after an exit code of zero here because this test should all pass. So passes, 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 it finishes. And once I echo the exit code, we get an exit code of zero. That's great. So the last thing I wanna do with you, don't worry, <laughs> the, the, the hard, the heavy lifting is done. I just want to add a new command here, test E2E loco. And all this is going to do is just going to execute forward slash scripts and forward slash run loco E2E. So I just want to run everything from my scripts in the package.json file. And once I do that, we'll see that it's actually running our command and everything should be looking good. Perfect. Everything is exactly as we wanted. And we are actually in a situation where we could, for example, already add this to our CI pipeline. However, we're going to do that in the next video because we, we don't really want to, to create a local server and then run the tests against this local server we want to actually run the tests, at least the E2E -E test, we want to run against a real server so that we get an idea like latency, performance, all these things should actually impact our E2E tests, okay? We are concerned with the whole user experience here and just running a local server on your CI environment and then running the E2E tests against it, it's gonna actually shortcut and it's gonna take a few, actually it's gonna take a few shortcuts that we don't wanna take for E2E tests. So for now, I think we're actually good to go. I'm just gonna format everything. I'm gonna make sure that everything is linting. Um, there are no linting problems. And I wanna run again the TSC check command just to make sure that everything is in order. There shouldn't be any new surprises here. And yeah, I think we're good to go. Perfect. So git status for us. Let's have a look. Anything missing here or anything we should not commit? I don't think so. Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. Perfect. So I'm going to add all this and I'm going to commit this. Commit with a message of feature added uh, Cypress E2E tests. All right, let's give it a couple of seconds. Just gonna run a few tests or a few checks here. That's the pre-commit hooks. We're gonna, once we commit this, we're gonna push this to our origin and that should be it. So git push, and I'm just gonna make sure that I have everything set up here. Yeah, perfect. Working good. So now let's see, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the, the, um, the GitHub page. And I'm just gonna make sure that the scripts are running fine here in our CI CD environment. So while we wait for these things to complete, and probably I'll be done talking before they complete, but in the next video, we will actually add a step here that will run an E2E test in our CI environment. There will be a few changes, which means we will deploy to a different environment Okay, we're going to make the changes so that we deploy to a different environment. We're going to run the tests against that environment. And then once that passes, we're going to deploy to production. So this is how we are going to do um, so that we, we don't deploy to production before running the E2E tests. That will give us a bit more confidence that we're running our tests against a real server somewhere else outside of our local processes here. And then we get more confidence that our code is working as expected. All right, folks, that's it. Everything green, everything worked fine. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video.